Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, we're over here at Time Talk and the reason why I'm here is because I have added a few more six wheeled coaches to my local passenger train which is going to be part of a bigger project later on hopefully at the end of the year so I just thought I'd show you my latest acquisitions for the North Eastern so our next project what is it? let's go and find out The Class 55 Deltic prototype has just brought out this crane ready for our next project. And the plan is, is to extend this train by adding some bridge components. So as you can see I've got my bits and pieces together, I think I've got everything I can think of. I've got some I-beams um, which I'm going to make some bridge trusses out of. I've got my bridge panelling and I've got uh, four tenders there, uh, six wheel tenders, which I'm going to uh, modify uh, to use to transport the Pico bridge trusses there and also I've got a couple of bolster wagons for the steel work that will go with the bridge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the tenders first um, take the bodies off and work out how I'm going to do all this um, bear in mind I've got height restrictions on the layout so I can't go no higher than a basic carriage um, so that will be interesting to see so the first thing I want to do is strip down all these tenders down to the chassis to see what we've got and what we can work with That's nice, nice flat bed. It's even got a hole there, so I might be able to use that as a pivotal hole. I will hopefully they're all like that. Let's see what this one's like. If they're all like this, happy days. Oh, that's been glued. <laughs> Look at that. It's a bit over the top. I think he wanted to keep this one on the track, I think. Right, that was easy bit. So the next thing to do is to take all these wheels off. Um, I think 
because I've got code 75 track these will be no good and I've already done this one because I had a little play later on in the week but these ones I'm going to have to cut these to get these wheels out so I'm just using a pair of heavy duty snips I'm doing it this way because I don't want to damage the actual boxes of the chassis. So the next thing I want to try and do is lose these couplings. They'll be easy enough, just in case of unscrewing them. And unscrewing that one, oh, so it's just this one. Right. Oh, it just lifts out. That's handy. So what I've got to do there, I've got to somehow flatten that and then fill that in, make it as good as this. Right, I had a bit of an issue with trying to get Dremel in there, it's just too narrow. So in the end I took it out to my shed, put it in a vise and got a coping saw with a fine blade and just cut right through that. And that now is eight millimeters. So by the time I add a millimeters worth of plastic card, it'll bring it to the same height as that from the bump from from the buffer um, beam. So that's the next thing. Get this the same as that. So I've, I've filed it flat now to get it uh, sort of level. Now I'm just going to add the little bit of plastic that I have cut to try and seal this hole. So more or less cut it the same shape as the um, coupling mount so I'll just leave that on there and let that go off and that should be the same height as the other ones so I'll just check that make sure I've got the 9mm yeah that's 9mm so I'll leave that to set What I'll do is while that's setting, I shall me measure the buffer beam, which is 4.5 millimeters in width. And what I'll do is I'll cut a piece of paper, which will take it up to that buffer beam and that buffer, and then uh, we'll glue it on. The, and then the paper will act like a piece of plastic card. So before I glue this piece of paper onto the buffer beam, I'm just going to scrape away some of the paint. Just to, so I can get a little bit of adhesion when I come to glue. So as you can see, I've glued the piece of paper on. So what I'm going to do now is just cover the whole thing with super glue. And it will go like plastic. And 
and what I'll do is I'll stick another piece of paper over that piece as well and then some very fine um, plastic strip to recreate the lower piece of the buffer beam and the top piece. So while waiting for that to harden we shall concentrate on cleaning up the rest of the tenders. So this one's got a lot of glue on it. Um, this uh, nipple here needs to be flattened and I think they're all like that. Glue on it and flattened. So what I'll do is I'll just get a file and just file these flat. And then some sandpaper to take off the glue. One thing I was not expecting to see when I took the tender bodies off of the chassis was a nice flat base to work with which is going to make my job a lot easier as you will see the more we progress with this build. Right so I've cleaned off all the bases on the chassis and uh, I'm looking around and they've all got different faults with them. Um, this one is broken. It snapped there but it hasn't broken off so I might be able to fix that. Um, some have got their axle boxes missing like this one. So that will have to be repaired. And all these are going to have to be repaired. Probably with little bits of plastic car but the main job I want to do now is fill this hole in so I'm just going to mix some epoxy resin and then fill the hole in and uh, once it goes off that will give me a good base in there for to screw the coupling in This epoxy resin doesn't go hot when you um, when it goes off because most epoxy resins, uh, with it being a, a, a chemical reaction, get quite warm. But this one doesn't. This is um, we call epoxy five. Uh, used to use it a lot when I. Uh, did the oak gauge layout many years ago. Right, so that is ready to go in the hole. So it's just enough. I have repaired the broken one. I've just stuck a little piece of one by one plastic strip in there and hopefully that once it's painted you'll never know that it was repaired. Now that I've carried out most of the repairs I'm just adding the axle bearings now for the new wheels so I'm just putting super glue into the actual boxes and then dropping in these bearings. Now these bearings are the shoulder type and uh, they should just sit in there nice and flush with with the axle boxes. The wheels I'm replacing for the old ones are 12.6 diameter 
wheels and uh, at the same time I'm adding some weights to these chassis because they are quite light even with the new type wheels which are all metal so now that the wheels are in and the chassis have been weighted so the next job to do is to fill in all the axle boxes so I'm just using little bits of plastic card 3mm by 3.5 and then once that's painted, you'd never know. So I've carried out all the repairs uh, on the on the chassis. I've done the axle boxes, and as you can see, of uh, the bearings and the and the axles and the wheels are all working quite well. It's spin forever. So that works. So the next thing I want to do now is on this face, um, I want to put a buffer beam in there, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to put any buffers on there just yet. So we'll do that next, it's just so I can get rid of that notch there, or partially get rid of that notch. Um, but this notch here might play a part yet, but we'll have to wait and see. So I've measured across the back there and it's 30mm, so I want four strips at 30mm. I'm presuming they're all the same. And we have this strip is uh, 4mm wide. And I've just cut it off a piece of uh, uh, a sheet of plastic card rather than buying a strip just to do this job. So that's that little job done. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add some chain link couplings. Now I'm using some Smith's fine scale three link couplings. You get eight in a packet, so there's just enough to do these um, tenders or bridge support pony trucks, whatever they're going to be when I'm finished. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm putting a slot in between the buffers there. Between the buffers is 18 millimeters, so it's roughly about 8.5 to 9 millimeters um, for the center. And I'm just using a 0.8 drill. In a Dremel, drill the top hole in and then just work the drill backwards and forwards slowly to form a slot to take the chain link bracket, uh, which comes with a spring, but I'm not sure if there's enough room in there to get the spring in as well because it's quite a thick piece of plastic to go through. I think that would have been all right for a kit or something. So I think what I'll end up doing is probably just super gluing that in there. And that makes short work of that. Yeah, that's gonna be perfect in there. I've got the first chain housing or bracket through. I'll just pull that forward a little bit, right yeah, about there. Um, the thing is there's not enough room in the back there to get the spring in but if I can get the split pin in I think that's all it'll need so I'll just prise that apart and then it's job done let's see as he's said and done he says I've now finished fitting the chain link couplings and what I have managed to do is to utilize the spring in the end because what I did is I cut the spring in half and uh, utilize the spring that way so there is a little bit of a spring on there you can see it so what I'm thinking of now is when these are not pulling heavy loads um, like the bridges which we will come into later on in the video or will come on to later on in the video is if these weren't being used they would have been coupled up back to back somehow 
I'd imagine, because they would have come in pairs. Um, so what I'm thinking of here is maybe putting in a draw bar latch here in the centre on each and having a draw bar which would have been about three or four foot long probably um, between the two of them so that's what I'm thinking of and then I'll make up the draw bars but I'll leave one on one of these um, chassis so it looks like it's got the tool to use if there was nothing being hauled on these I'd imagine they would probably would have used these for not just bridges but for um, really long tubes and other heavy um, items that were going to run on the railway but that's my thinking anyway to put a drawbar in between these two chassis. So this is what I was thinking of. So what I've done is I've made a little bracket there with a hole in it and so that will become the hookup for the drawbar. Now how I made them is quite simple. What I've done is I've got some I-beam, some 4mm I beam, drilled a hole in it as you can see, and cut off the flange on the lower side, and then you're just left with a T piece like this. With a hole in, and then you just glue that into the centre of there. So now we have our draw bars. I've made them out of 2mm rod. They're 10mm long and all I've done is I cut a groove in the ends and then super glued two washers or spring washers into the slots. Now the spring washers, you've got to take the spring out of the washers. So I used two pairs of pliers and just tweaked them until the spring was out and then the spring part of the washer goes into the slot gives you a bit more glue coverage as well actually bites it into there so in theory when these are not being used and they're being transported around the lines this would be in between the two um, with some draw bolts in there uh, to keep the gap that's my theory anyway. So you're probably wondering now, how is all this going to work? Right, well these things, these draw bars are just for show. They're not going to be used. So they'll be um, either clamped or bracketed to the sides of these uh, tender chassis. So let me show you how I'm planning on making this work. This is my vision of the bridge transportation train or the bridge transporter if you like with a girder plate on a pair of railway tenders or railway engine tenders as you can see I was going to use A4 tenders but could you find any second hand ones anywhere? Um, not at the moment, so I've gone with these. They'll do the job. Anyway, that's the idea. And then following behind that will be the bolster wagon, which will have all the steel work, um, the girders and everything else for the bridge span, which ties the two um, girder plates together. Now, the way I'm going to do this is, if I zoom in on this one, using the existing holes, which is uh, very lucky on my part, I'll make up a bracket which will glue the girder to it and the whole thing should swivel on that hole on both ends. 
so any curves in the track or anything like that it should follow without any derailments here we have the drawing for the bracket for the girder plates as you can see it's oops I'm sorry <laughs> wrong one As you can see, it's 30mm long, 16mm wide, and the plastic hole is going to be 2mm thick. The hole is going to be 3mm, but it's going to have a little bit of a yeah, cancelling to it, so it, it drops in. And 5mm uh, from the edge. And this is how it's going to work on the other side. As you can see, this is the checker plate I've got to make, which will sit... in here and the bracket will swivel to and fro on this bit which will allow the girder plate to move with any curve um, or radiuses in the layout so what I'm doing now is I'm just opening up the holes on the chassis for three mil I'm just taking off all the sharp edges because any little sharp edge on this bracket could cause it to derail so if you take it off on both sides just to make sure there's no sharp edges next thing to do is to start gluing these little brackets to your bridge girders. Um, I have noticed that the ends are not square. Now it's important that you get this face nice and square. So I'm looking at it and I'm just going to run the blade across that a few times just to square that off a little bit. Because you don't want this to be leaning when it's on the chassis. I'll just take that, I'll just check the other side as well. That's the same, there's a, there's a lip on that edge. So you just, you've got to take that off. Right, so now that you're happy with your, your girder plate bridge ends or sides, now we can start gluing them to these brackets. So I've marked a line there, 21 millimeters from this edge. I'm just putting a bead of glue there up to that point and then obviously making sure your bench is nice and clean to do this bit because this is critical you need your bridge girder plate to be bang center of your bracket that you've made making sure it's nice and flat too and parallel to your bracket. I'm just making sure I've got six millimeters either side. If not, just push it over. Quite up to the line, here we go. And once you're happy with it, just check that you make sure you've got a nice right angle in there. 90 degrees off both plates, this side on this side. I've put some glue on the second little bracket. I'm just making sure it's parallel this way. So I'm just making sure that these two brackets are parallel with each other. Because if they're parallel then the girder's parallel to the brackets. So I'm just checking to make sure I've got still got my six millimeters. Bear in mind this glue is still wet. Six millimeters there, six millimeters there. Right, now that we've got the first one fitted to the chassis, so we'll just uh, have a quick test, make sure it goes through the points all right, and it follows the contours. 
of the bends. Which it does. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. So now that we've had a, a little test run to make sure that they are going to do what they are going to do and follow the contours of bends and radiuses, um, we can now concentrate back on the tenders or the tender chassis and we'll pick up the bridge components later. Next thing I want to do is the checker plate that I was talking about earlier. Um, if you look closely, you'll see the checker marks. Now, how I got them was I took the four pieces that I want for my um, chassis to my shed and I put them in the vise and just crushed them and um, left an imprint on this very thin plastic sheet. So that's how I got the checker plate markings on here. Save scribing, I think. So the next thing is to glue these onto here. It just adds a little more detail. Before I glue the checker plate to the bases, I'm just giving them a good roughing up with a bit of sandpaper just to give the glue. Um, something to contact to because you don't know if there's been oil on these or, or what so that's just adds a little bit of adhesion helps with the glue right now I'm going to make a start on the handrail um, as you can see I've already pre-drilled the holes roughly about 1.5 million from the edge and 8 mil centers and uh, I've pre-cut some copper wire same technique I used for the signal box so what I've done is I've left them quite long at the moment because they're going to need to be cut down and uh, there's one I've done earlier that just needs to be cut down. So I'm putting four posts in, then I'm going to run a handrail across the top. Now it's time to mark all the copper strips. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of card, 10 mil wide, and I'm just using that as a guide so I can mark all of these at the right height. And then what I'll do is I'll just chop them all off and then I can um, solder another piece of wire across the top and then that gives us uh, the handrail so the next thing to do is to solder the top rail on so I'm just going to put a tiny piece of flux on each one of these uprights and hopefully we'll be able to solder one of these ends on and work our way along Like so. so. Now that I've got the first one soldered on, I can just work my way along. So all I'm doing now is just finishing off. I've got the two end ones done. So I'm just touching the two centre ones. I don't want loads and loads of solder wire on there. I just want it to be as fine, delicate as possible. Right, I should do that one. Now that all the soldering is done, it's just a case of cleaning up now uh, with a little bit of sandpaper and taking off any excess solder. So you try and leave it as smooth as possible because uh, any huge blobs on there or anything like that will show up when I come to paint them 
Not a case of sanding them back. I'm just going around all the repaired actual boxes. Um, I'm using one of Mrs. T's nail files just to round the corners over. Just to take the squareness off. I'm now in the process of fitting the couplings onto these tender chassis. Um, the couplings I'm using are the Backman 36-026. They're the mini D couplings. Um, the reason why I'm using these is because on the old Hornby railways, you've already got the pip and the hole pre-drilled. So it's, these are ideal for just swapping the old for the new. But on this old Hornby Triang one, or this Triang one, where I've had to fill in the hole, I'm just going to have to drill a hole into the mix that's in there already, that preset twin pack hardener that's already in there. And then what I'll do is once it's drilled and the screw screwed in, I'll just put a little bit of super glue on there as well, just to stop the couplings from spinning from side to side so that's what I'm doing next I've already done this pair here uh, as you can see it's coming together nicely I'm using the original screws as well which helps I've decided to add more detail to these load-bearing wagons um, you see these square lugs which used to keep the tender apart I'm going to make use of them um, as you can see, I've stuck on a piece of 4mm plastic strip there. And I'm going to do the same this side. One side I'm going to create toolboxes um, for the bolts, um, shackles, um, and uh, maybe some jigs or whatever they would carry in one side. And then on the other side, I'm just going to have it open. And I'm going to glue some chain in there for the slingers. So I'm just breaking up and adding more detail to these load-bearing wagons. That's what I'm going to call them from now on, the load-bearing wagons. Because um, they're not tender chassis anymore. So then we have something like this. So that's one down and three to go. So we've got two toolboxes here, small toolbox there and that's just a, a cover plate just doing nothing and in between there we have a little trough where the chain will go and here are the tender wagons or the load bearing wagons uh, now attached to the train um, don't think I'm going to have time to paint these up this weekend but what I'd like to do this weekend is show you a running test just to make sure that these bridges go under the bridges on the layout um, so what we'll do we shall couple up an engine to it and we'll see it running around the layout with the crane and everything like a proper full um, the maintenance engineering train.
As you have witnessed, the test was a great success. Um, going backwards, forwards, crossing the crossovers and all the radiuses, uh, no problems with the articulation of this bridge um, girder on these two tender chassis. So I'm quite happy uh, with the way that the test has worked out. Um, my original plan for this, by the way, wasn't to have two separate girders on two separate sets of tender chassis. Uh, my original idea was to have the two girders on a pair of A4 chassis, tender chassis. Um, obviously with a longer wheelbase you'll be able to cope with the loads but could I find any A4 chassis or tenders? Uh, not really. Not really. But this makes the train look a whole lot different I think. Um, it seems to work. So, um, the next video we're already talking about next week's video. Um, right, that's good. So, what we're going to do on next week's video is to paint these up. Um, um, yeah, paint these up. Uh, I'm not going to bother adding any more detail because um, there's enough detail in there. If you look closely, you can see the handles on the toolboxes. And um, we have a little tray there to put the chain. Um, like we had said earlier. Uh, the next thing to do is to build a bridge for the girders. You're probably wondering what a bridge? Well the idea is not only have you got the girders but you want all the steel work that goes with the bridge hence why we have two bolster wagons. So that will be in next week's video and also there will be a little details to add to these girders, uh, lifting eyes and uh, probably some shackles, that sort of thing, and some brackets to brace this here on both sides. So that should uh, be the final piece of detail to add to this train and that will all be in next week's video. So until then if you like what you're seeing, leave a comment. I'm sure I'll get back to you. Until then, it's bye bye from me, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.